Ready here, one, two, okay. three. Action. What is up guys, Fahan here with Za once again and today we have Shen. How are you Shen? Hey, hi, Thank hello. Thank you so much for coming Thank to you. this hey. review with us. Thank you, it's an honor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I know that we've already covered the Vespa LX150. This is uh, actually the successor of the Vespa LX150, mm -hmm. which is the Primavera. Uh, Primavera 150, yeah. Yes. I, that name is so mouthful. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, before Shen tells us the story about his Vespa, we're going to give a bit of background about it. Uh. Replacing the Vespa LX series in 2014, the Vespa Primavera 150 is an automatic scooter manufactured by Pagio under the Vespa brand. The name is a throwback to the original 1986 Primavera. It is marketed as the most technologically advanced Vespa produced at the time of its release. Engine is a 150cc air-cooled four-stroke three-valve single-cylinder SOHC with fuel injection and automatic CVT transmission. In Singapore, the Vespa Primavera is commonly seen on the streets. Alright guys, so shout out to our sponsor, Lippi Moli. Do check out their online store for awesome motorbike care related products. Support us by clicking on the link below to view the range of products. Or use our promo code upon checking out. How long have you owned this bike and why did you choose the Primavera 150 as okay. your bike? So this bike, I've had it only uh, mm -hmm. since the start of the year. Mm. Uh, I think I bought it um, Late December last year, okay. uh, and I bought it from Ma Motors, uh, mm -hmm. which is the of, of official retailers for this, right? Before this, I was actually riding a Yamaha TW200, oh, uh, okay. and before then, I was actually riding a LX150. I got my license about 20 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, and then I was riding a Honda Phantom for about five years. And then for 15 years, I actually took a break from uh, motorbikes altogether. But last year, since COVID came, you know, I had a bit more time on my hands, right? Uh -huh. uh, I got a bit itchy, a bit of midlife crisis. <laughs> so <laughs> I went back into bikes, which is something uh -huh. I've always been wanting to get back into. Uh -huh. uh, I was a bit scared, so I started on the Vespa LX 150. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very afraid of using the manual the clutch in and the stuff like that, so I went with that. <laughs> okay, but, but after I rode the LX 150 for a while, right, I found that it was not very fun. Uh. So I really wanted to get back to the clutch, the manual uh, type of bikes, right? Yeah. And that's why I got the Yamaha TW200. Ah, yeah. okay. And then uh, the Yamaha TW200, because it's a heavily modified bike, right, mm -hmm. uh, was starting to give me a lot of issues here and there. Signal lights always uh, 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 dropping off because of the vibrations and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I said, okay, never mind. I it's time to move on. Uh, maybe it's time to get a new bike. Uh -huh. uh, and of course, when I ask my wife uh, what new bike can I get, right? The first thing she says is uh, Vespa. La. <laughs> yeah. So uh, why I chose the Vespa? It's because I, I think it's an icon. La. Za, you, you can attest to it. Uh, oh, of course, you are the classical Vespa supporter. But I, I, I didn't want to be encumbered with the, the burdens of, uh, uh, you know, the older bikes. Uh -huh. So that's why I thought a modern Vespa uh, could be a good compromise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I thought the Vespa would be good. I, I think for uh, when you actually buy a Vespa, uh, you are not really buying a product. Uh, you are actually buying a lifestyle, uh, You know, yeah. the Vespa is such an icon. Um, yeah. So in in a nutshell, that's how I <laughs> I came to get this bike. Yeah. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah. So it is the your wife's uh, <laughs> final say that okay, buy a Vespa. Okay, buy. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think she's. Uh, Although that said, uh, last week I just bought a KTM RC200, so <laughs> uh, she was not very happy with that. But uh, I told her, you know, I'm already 40 years old. I, I just crossed 40 years old. Um, if I don't try a sports bike, I don't think I will ever have a chance again. Uh, so I think she unwillingly uh, accepted the fact that, you know, uh, uh -huh. I can try a, a sports you bike. Remind me of uh, Sheffield, uh, right, bro. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because he also had a midlife crisis, that's why he got his Ducati. Yeah. Ah, okay, <laughs> la, but I, I won't come to that, to that point. La. Yeah. <laughs> give, give yourself a couple more years. Uh. I got eight years, bro. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's your definition of midlife crisis? 40, mm. uh, 45. I don't know, I don't know uh, usually 40, 45 around yeah, there. Yeah, I hear yeah, many stories uh, from people. Uh. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I know you've been riding this for mm. like, I think... Uh, a couple of months, couple yeah. Of months. Yes. Like, eight, eight months. Uh. Yes, eight months, eight that's months. right. And uh, how do you compare 
You know, since you wrote the LX before, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You've covered the LX. How do you compare with the LX? Or maybe other mm-hmm. other bike you've ridden before? Uh, the LX very funny. Uh, just to share my my experience buying it, right? Uh, when it was listed on Carousel, the the seller said that the, the it was low mileage. Uh. I think mm-hmm. it was like eight or nine thousand. Huh. So and it was like a seven year old bike. So I was like, wow. This is it, man. This is the gem that I've been, I would be able to get. So I was fantasizing. It must most probably be a lady rider. Mm-hmm. Maybe don't ride much. Uh, keep most of the time in the car park. Uh-huh. Uh, very well maintained, right? Uh, when I met the guy, uh, he was a durian seller, always <laughs> man. <laughs> so, but I, 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 for me, I, the price wasn't that steep. So I uh-huh. said, okay, I'll, I'll just take the plunge. And then the funny thing is when I brought it to a waste garage, which mm-hmm. was, uh, d- just to take a look at the, the bike, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he was sharing with me, uh, if you notice the speedometer, right? Only has five digits. Uh. Uh-huh. So guess what happens when you hit 99999? It goes back to zero. <laughs> so, <laughs> he was saying that the bike most probably is a... Uh, Hundred and eight thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I, to be to be fair, I think he doesn't know also lah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, hey, hey, yeah. Eight thousand only. I guess. Correct. Yeah. Okay, but but was the outlook of the bike in good? Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, that's one thing I, I wanted to share. The bike was generally pretty uh, nice looking, mm. uh, but there were cracks on the floorboard lah, and that mm. uh, sort of a, a, were red flags. Uh, I later did some research and found out right that um, one of the reasons why cracks always uh, come out for most Vespas, right? Uh, it's because of the floor mat. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people, they, they tend to want to put a floor mat very quickly, right? Thinking that they will protect the bike. Uh, but what I, I read, or I, and I spoke to Ma about it as well, is that when you put a floor mat, right? And if a stones or stones enter the floor mat and you step on it over time, right? Uh, that, that's the thing that causes the cracks mm-hmm. to appear. La. People who just bought a Vespa, maybe my suggestion is don't go ahead with the floor mat, uh-huh. the rubber floor so mat. So the floor mat actually goes on top of this. Yes, correct, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's yeah. not recommended that you put it in. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I mean, that's, that's what uh, from what I read. Uh, is yeah. that an original accessory or? Yes, it is, yeah. Oh, it's an original accessory. Yes, so Vespa yeah. provide that as an after, aftermarket part. Correct, yes. Mm, Interesting, yeah. 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 then yeah. you should remedy it then. Yeah. <laughs> Especially things that come from the manufacturer, she usually not like have some defects. I, mean, I guess maybe over time, the minute a, a couple of stones enter from a, 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 the starting uh, entry oh. point, right? Mm. And then that's perhaps when the problems mm. will start. So like. basically the, the, the rider themselves, you know, should take uh, extra effort to clean out every now and then, yes, you know, yeah. uh, instead of... Just to prevent the stones. Mm. Uh, yeah. And one thing I love about the Prima Vera is that I like this uh, metallic trims. Uh. Mm. Mm. Yes, uh, yeah. It looks, it looks retro. Why pastel colour? Why this? Uh, why pastel colour? colour no? It's yeah. a very unique colour. Uh. Yeah, uh, I know. Uh. Yeah. You know, when I was doing some research on what bike colour to get, uh, so uh-huh. this, I believe the colour, the official colour is Relax Green. Uh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so which I thought was a, a bit apt, you know. And also I was doing some research, I was watching some of those Vespa uh, uh, videos on YouTube, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, mostly uh, from the US. There's this uh, a very famous guy called Moto uh, Robot uh, who does a lot of videos on Vespas. Uh. Uh-huh. Uh, and then he was introducing this color. So when I saw this, I was like, okay, it looks not bad. But when I went to the showroom and I saw it in person, I was like, wow. It's actually quite unique. Uh. I thought, you know, comp- just getting the, you know, the yellow, the typical yellow, the red. Uh, I thought this is something different. It was be- between this and the white. Uh, um, so I was going more for a more classical color. Mm. Uh, I thought this was a bit of a classic color with a bit of a pop. So okay. yeah, hence I, I went with this color. Being an automatic scooter, it has the conveniences of a, you know, typical scooter. Like, yes, like yes. I storage. Correct. And also the... Front yes. storage cubby, yeah. Yeah. And uh, then, how's the riding posture like for you? I think you, when you, I, I watch your Lambretta video, and that's how I actually uh, <laughs> reach out to you. Um, so I totally agree with what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when you ride on this uh, Vespa, uh, after a while, you will start to get the back pain, yeah, on the on the lower parts. <laughs> but that's it. Mm-hmm. When I rode the uh, KTM RC 200, the one I bought last week, mm-hmm. right? Um, last I, week. Yeah, I just bought one. <laughs> All thanks to your video, oh also. <laughs> Uh, that oh, that no sort more. of influenced me Ready to look to race, at that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that. When I rode the KTM RC200, I started to get a back, upper back and shoulder pain. <laughs> so I realised, and when I was riding the Yamaha TW200, I uh-huh. had a middle back pain. So I realised actually okay. maybe it's not the bike, it's just, uh, it's just the, the function age. of the <laughs> It's just us. Yeah, or, or lack of core muscle uh, for me. <laughs> so, Perhaps, uh, maybe, yeah. maybe.
<laughs> yeah, so uh, the, so it is quite harsh, and I mean, I think the suspension, the stock suspension, mm. right, is really quite harsh, lah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I can literally feel uh, every bump on the road. Uh, in fact, I, I try as much as possible to to get around the bumps, uh, mm-hmm. because uh, you can really feel the harshness of it. Mm. Uh, most people would uh, upgrade the suspension to you know your Olins. Uh, mm. I think they are going for about 1500 for both front and back. Uh, the mm. B2Bos are, I think, mm. about half the price. Uh, and so what I see mostly uh, on carousel, the older Vespas on mm. resale, right, uh, usually the suspensions are changed already. So I take it that uh, one reason for that is because the stock suspensions are really just too harsh. Uh. When it comes to maneuverability, right, mm. uh, I have to give the Vespa uh, the thumbs up lah. You know, when you think of Vespa, uh-huh. you will dream of uh, somebody riding in the cobble street of uh, Rome, uh-huh. you know, or maybe along the uh, the French Alps, or maybe even like Bali, you know, mm-hmm. uh, be- along the beach. Uh-huh. Uh, in Singapore, <laughs> uh, the version would be driving around like Katong or Jujian, <laughs> going to go and tap out Prata. So, uh, unfortunately, my romantic uh, notion of uh, a Vespa riding is that. But, but I have to say, it uh-huh performs very well in the small streets. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the wheel size uh, is built for the smaller streets uh, mm-hmm. and it's so easy to get around. Uh. So with regards to riding, I think it's uh, it's really good. Uh. Uh, for new riders, I think they will, it's such an easy transition. Uh, mm-hmm. The only bad thing is uh, uh-huh. uh, being a scooter, there's no uh, no manual transmission. Uh. So uh-huh. over time, you may lose that the competency. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I mean, you know, like for me, I understand that. Uh, mm. From for me, at one point in time, I was riding automatic scooters, right, for quite a long time. Mm. So when I got into this my current bike, I was like, not clutching in, you know. Mm. Then suddenly <laughs> change gear. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw the video. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, when I bought my Yamaha TW two hundred, uh-huh. right? Uh, I actually told the seller to teach me how to ride. <laughs> Give me a refresher course because I may have forgotten. But I, I mean, I think you mm. we pick it up very quickly. Yeah, it's one of those skills that is I yeah, think yeah. almost ingrained I, in I, us. I, I, really. agree. Yeah. I mean, riding motorbikes is a lifetime skill, you know. Yes, yeah. No matter how different layout or different position of the bike or mm. different mix, you know, if you will pick up within one or two days, then. Yes. Yeah, back to normal. And I, and I think the rigorous uh, requirements for us to pass licenses in Singapore, right? Uh, mm. I think really helps in yeah, that. It's because true, it's true, really right. ingrained in us uh, after yeah. taking so many lessons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It becomes natural already. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So for a Primavera, right? I'm not sure mm. about the, I'm, uh, for the LX, I've seen like some accessories mm, yes, on the yeah. internet. You know, after yes. market pass, there's a lot of it. Uh. How yeah. about mm-hmm. the Primavera? Though? Likewise, yeah, I think uh, very similar to the LX uh, or the different versions would be the Sprint, which is a bit more aggressive. Mm. Or the mm-hmm. GTS, right? Uh, a lot of accessories to play with, uh, your lights and all. For me, uh, I just got the front fender protector, which is that, mm-hmm. that metal piece. I was thinking of whether to get uh, the side crash guard as well, but I thought too much, uh, too much chrome already. <laughs> so for me, it was pure looks. Like. I don't mm-hmm. think it, it performs any function at all. <coughs> so, <laughs> so I don't think it really helps yeah, the I've protector. Seen a, I've seen a Vespa in like, how to say, a picture of it like, mm-hmm. in somewhere in UK. Eh. It's a modern Vespa, but mm. you know the fog lights, they like to put a lot of Ah, it. yes, 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 that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for me, uh, accessorizing or modification, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, f- I feel that if you want to gain uh, abstract full value of your bike, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you should actually pace out the modification so that the novelty effect doesn't die out. Ah. So you do something, you ride it for a while, and then after that, when you start to feel hey, a bit boring already, uh-huh. uh, uh, then you do something else, uh, ah. then slowly you spread it out, right? Sometimes, you know, even for me last time, well, I just want to get everything done up nicely. <laughs> well, this will be the perfect bike. Then I realized after a while, then you get bored of it, mm-hmm. you know. So maybe I, I would think now I would want to pace out uh, the modifications. Uh. So ah, I, there are a lot of okay. things I think I can do with it. Um, but see how, we, we see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Does it actually come with a box? <coughs> uh, yes, yes. Uh, oh. So I, I actually have a box, but I didn't want to install it. So it's similar to my idea of the spacing out the modifications, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I will ride it without a box for a while. And then I think once I'm, I'm done playing without a box, then I will get one. Uh. So uh, I, I really have it. Uh, it's just that I haven't collected it yet oh. uh, from Ma. Uh, when I bought the bike, it came with a box. So uh. it matches the color as well? Uh, it's the same color. Ah, <laughs> and with uh, the, the leather backrest, uh, the oh, same, same color as this. Color. Uh. So I have to say the leather seat is a very unique color. Uh. Yeah, yeah, you correct. You ever yes. see brown on the motorbike? Yes. Yeah. It looks good, you know? Uh, yeah. And it matches the teal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then the stitching. Yes. Uh. Wow, 
Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And very good quality, but very hard. I yeah, yeah, correct, yeah. It, it is, it is. Yeah. Compare this mm -hmm. to the LX 150 that you have rode before. Yes. How would you describe its performance? Maybe uh, the mechanical aspect of the bike. Right. How different okay. is it? I think this one uses the new I get engine, mm -hmm. which is uh, I think uh, again uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, uh, the viewers may know better, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it's on the latest uh, uh, Euro. Um, uh, uh, standards, right? Okay. So this engine is way quieter than the LX mm. 150, lah. I, I feel power-wise, pretty similar. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the LX you can hear the poop 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 feel. <laughs> this one is more. Uh, uh, no, uh, poop poop poop. <laughs> the poop poop, the intervals between the poop poop poops are a bit shorter. <laughs> la. when, when I first took this bike out from the showroom, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. oh, it was unimaginable. I was like almost riding an electric bike, mm -hmm. uh, There was no sound. But uh, funnily, that. Uh, after I did my first servicing, uh, then it went back to... <laughs> then it got sound. Yeah, then it got sound. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think it was a feel good, um, first right feel good uh, feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, then after that, back to normal. Ah, <laughs> yeah. okay, okay. But, but it's still way quieter than the LX, I feel. So, I, I believe the fuel capacity might be the same? As yes, the... Uh, I, if I'm not wrong, 8 liters for the LX as well. But typically, I will only pump about uh, 5 Five liters or so, mm -hmm. and the reason for this, right, is because if you if the fuel overflows, right, it actually mm -hmm. goes into your case. Uh, one trick that uh, I read about, right, is actually to put the cap when you take this cap out, right, is to wedge it here mm -hmm. so that if there's any excess fuel, right, it will flow down instead of into this uh, the your case, right. Uh -huh. It flows down into oh, the engine now. Yeah, so this can be removed. Yeah, and then the fuel goes in, and then of course destroys your engine number. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Eh? Yeah, so the that's to prevent the fuel from coming in because once it comes in here, uh, it's going to be hard to to re yeah, remove yeah. the smell at least, mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that's one thing I learned the hard way <laughs> because I <laughs> I pump too much and then it overflowed, lah. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, so it okay. Put flow inside here. Yeah, correct. The 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 fuel actually flowed uh into the this yeah, which mm. was a headache, lah. I see, I yeah. see. So after you open it, you air it for a while, it will like... No uh, way yeah, it did. <laughs> uh, the, the only problem is all my all the cloth I had inside there all oh, picked okay. up uh, the fuel. Mm, so okay, okay. Yeah, it's just a bit of headache. So this, yeah. this trick I thought was pretty good. Just put this as a wedge uh, so that the fuel, fuel can go down. Now. But it can mm -hmm. close, la, no issue. La. Uh, yeah, uh, no, I, uh, you, you do this when you pump uh, oh, petrol. The uh, uh, then after you're done, then you put it back down. Then you go. Oh, uh, it's just to okay. prevent the fuel from flowing straight. Into I here. see, I yeah. see. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's cool, man. Right. First so, time you say, I see an internal uh, compartment can take out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people they uh, this is that's why the, they say it's so easy to maintain a, a motorbike because you don't actually have to remove much. Uh, you can actually just access most of the stuff from here. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing you have to as, uh, access from here is I can't remember what. Uh, yeah, spark plug. I mm -hmm. think. Now uh, everything else, I think maybe the spark plug can even be accessed from here if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So that's why I'm not very sure about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. No, no problem. Worries. How is your maintenance schedule like uh, so far? Uh, because I bought the bike uh, uh, quite recently, right? Uh -huh. uh, I'm still under the first three free servicing uh, under Ma. Uh -huh. So I just went for my second servicing, uh, mm -hmm. which is the 3000 mark. Mm -hmm. uh, I ride this bike so little, I went when I was only 2000. 200 kilometers or something like that. <laughs> so the next one would be the 5,000 mark. Uh, nice. So nothing much to comment on that. Um, it's just uh, straightforward. But I believe um, there are a lot of uh, good uh, shops, you know, for servicing of Vespas. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the popular ones are like your uh, Ma one would be of course sporting mm -hmm. uh, motors, and then uh, you can also go to like Waze Garage mm -hmm. or Scooter Narcotics. There are a couple of these very mm -hmm. famous uh, shops la, mm -hmm. that most people who ride Vespa they would like to go to. Uh, and I don't think it's very costly. So mm -hmm. um, I think maintenance wise, the Vespa is. Uh, and I, I, mm -hmm. I think you know, uh, you interviewed the Wandering Wap Sprite, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Juvina. Oh, that I mean, was me, la. that was. Not a bike review, but you talk about. I uh, just a ride. conversation, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, for the fact that she managed to ride from here all the way to Europe, I think attests to the fact that. <laughs> and on a 90s era Vespa. Exactly, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which. Respect. Yeah. <laughs> and so MBH, I think she only paid like $2,000 for it or something like that, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can vouch for that because the Vespa engine is mm. very robust, you know? Yes. You know, it's, it's strong that even in Malaysia, they use that engine mm. as uh, the, the motto for the the buggy to transport all the mm. oil pump, you know, out of the uh, plantation. Mm, the, the engine, right? <laughs> ah, the yeah. 150 engine. Uh, yep. Imagine you carry one ton of oil pump mm. behind you, 
Mm. Using a 150 engine. Mm. Wow. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Shan, I have to ask you, mm. what, is, what is that lock button yes. over there? Oh, this is to open up this. So it's an electronic uh, button. When you click on this, you can open this, it opens this. Oh, oh actually, okay. there's yeah. a cool sound, yeah? Yeah, correct. There's a, it's electronic, so it's definitely, it's not mechanical. And this one, if you, to open this, you just press this, oh, and this pops okay. out, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, not much space. Uh, you can only put a cash card, some tissue paper. Yeah. Okay, like, at, glasses, least, yeah. at least the, the storage cubby, you can put a bigger phone. Nah. <laughs> yeah, 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 the, 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 the Lambretta one. Lambretta, Lambretta yeah, for ice. Shocked. I was my first time putting the phone in, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and then, I think that that was designed for like, what, the iPhone 5? Yeah. The smaller version? It's all bike. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, but, okay, okay. But sometimes, uh, mistake, uh, I mean, nowadays, no, they don't turn on the, the ERP, uh -huh. right? Except for, I think, on CTE. Mm -hmm. So there was one day I was riding the bike, and then, oh my god, there's an ERP in front! Oh, no cash card. Uh, so the good thing is, because it's here, I could quickly press. The person take out the cash card and managed to put I it in. Stop on the road shoulder, right? No, no, I made it in time. <laughs> uh, the good thing it was not not many uh, mm, cars, my cars uh, la, Yeah, mm, so I was on the uh, which the, yeah confuses me why they are turning on the ERP la, when they yeah, are not many cars. So yeah, yeah la, all, all this while la, during the what circuit breaker yeah. and the days after that, mm. the the ERP are not uh, in in operation. In operation. Yes, yeah. So you like. Mm, you wish round. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that, that really took me by surprise because I, I didn't realize that they turned it on already. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but that's it. Of course, mm. I think now you can link a uh, credit card to the ERP. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you accidentally go by, you can automatically. Uh, they'll just deduct from yeah. the credit card. So uh, which I think is, uh, which I think I will do for this bike. Uh, I, I think I haven't <laughs> done it yet. So is this your da daily driver? Oh. Uh, no. I, I I actually drive a car. So, mm. And I got two young kids, uh, which leads me to the fact that eventually I will want to pass this bike to uh, them uh, uh, so if they are watching this uh, can you all don't jump pass and see who, <laughs> <laughs> who wins uh, and gets this one yeah. get the, uh, get uh, the KTM RC yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. yeah maybe we will do it that way yeah. so what hmm. do your kids think of it Oh, um, Cute little bike, right? Yeah, sometimes I, I okay, I, I, in a very quiet car park, uh, mm -hmm. I will have them uh, stand in front and I'll just uh, bring them around. around yeah. <laughs> they will wear their uh, bicycle helmet. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll just bring them uh, just a short distance. Uh, just, uh, no, I mean, we don't go out uh, mm. of uh, any car park area, yeah. la, just a short one. Just and then a they, joy ride like for it. them. La. Yeah. <laughs> I was, for a period of time, I was thinking of the sidecar, but I mean, that, that defeats the purpose of its maneuverability, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, right now, the main thing I use this for is to tap out food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Does it come with a hook? Uh, yes, yes, it comes with a hook. Yeah, so the hook is here. Just like the Alex. Yeah, so. yeah, every Vespa. Uh, every, yeah. every, every Vespa. This is what versatility is. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so just to share with you one very funny story, uh -huh. uh, which I think would be one of the questions, right? What's the most me memorable uh, yeah. <laughs> thing, uh, one of the most memorable uh, experiences I had with mm -hmm. this? There was one day, uh, I was shopping at the uh, NTUC, uh, uh -huh. supermarket. So I was buying a lot of stuff, the usual. Uh, 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 I typically will just use Red Mart or whatever to mm. do delivery, right? But for fruits, uh, usually I will, I will buy uh, in person. Uh. So I was getting a uh, watermelon, I was buying ice cream, I was buying the food thing, uh, a lot of stuff. Then suddenly it occurred to me, oh my god, I didn't drive the car today, I rode the... <laughs> <laughs> the oh my god! Oh my god. Oh. I had uh, ice cream uh, on this handlebar. <laughs> the watermelon was in between my feet. <laughs> uh, I had a lot of things uh, hooked in the front. Mm -hmm. uh, everything uh, inside was completely um, full. Uh, I, I even had to press down hard to close the, oh the thing. Yeah. <laughs> but amazingly, uh, okay, the distance mm -hmm. wasn't much. Uh, uh -huh. I think maybe like a three, four kilometer distance. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, amazingly, uh, no problem. Yeah. And then that's why I, I really like it. It's, it's just so versatile. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so easy to, to ride, right? Even with all that weight, uh, and mm -hmm. I think uh, based on what you mentioned before in previous <laughs> videos, I think you carry it uh, uh, way a lot more. Uh, I, uh, yes, I, I really literally abuse my bike. It's, it's almost as good as lorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's a truck, like a truck, uh, you know. Yeah. He really use it until uh, to the end of his life, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, you were sharing the thing snapped yeah. into two, right? Yeah, yeah, lucky, lucky. You know, good, good thing that uh, the COE is just like seven months to expiry. Mm. So it does. It's not 
so hard pain so hard pain lah but yeah. I mean a lot of memories with the bike lah yeah <laughs> and you mentioned that wow, that also got me a bit scared lah <laughs> uh, but okay yeah. I mean the the new age Vespa mm. they have an internal chassis mm. unlike the older Vespa mm. it does not has an internal chassis it okay. is a one piece of metal okay. molded into that shape ah okay uh, so okay. that's why so the chassis okay. is uh. the body also. yeah the body <laughs> is the chassis <laughs> Yeah. Mm. So this one is there is an internal chassis, so it's mm. much more stronger, lah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I trust you. <laughs> the body is plastic, Being a car scooby scooter, mm. automatic scooter. Yes. Uh, who would you recommend the mm. Primavera 150 for? I think anybody who is uh, who's just gotten their license, uh, who thinks that they want to. Uh, mm. uh, try riding, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but they are maybe a bit afraid, you know, sometimes uh, you go all the way in front of the traffic junction and then you are okay a bit of uh, anxiety uh-huh. or whether I'm the, I can roll off mm-hmm. quick enough. Uh, this would be definitely uh, no problem. La. It has the um, pickup. La. The pickup uh. is there. It's so easy to, because and you're sitting in an upright position, mm. uh, your legs are just there. So you just have to pull up your legs and then off you go. Mm-hmm. So and of course, being a scooter, it's just throttle and go. Mm. So it's very zippy. Definitely you will lose <laughs> at the traffic light. Mm-hmm. I think I see all your other videos. Uh, everybody will say, whoa, you know, when come to talk, uh, <laughs> boom, I'm the first one off. <laughs> this one, uh, maybe for 0.2 seconds, uh, you'll be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> everybody go by you already. So definitely very easy to ride. Mm-hmm. I think if you are looking also for a lifestyle, you know, uh, one thing I like about this bike, uh, you, you, you can dress in any way mm-hmm. and you still look pretty decent on the bike. <laughs> You will see like, you know, people wearing uh, suits, uh-huh. uh, you know, uh, wearing ties uh, or, you know, the office ladies uh, with mm-hmm. their high heels mm-hmm. and their very cute helmets. Uh, they all look good on the bike. Yeah, yeah, uh, and then you get people with flip-flops, uh, like me, I usually in the flip-flop, mm-hmm. t-shirt, bermuda. Also look okay, sportswear also look okay. Yep. Now, even the ape with the short sleeve, uh, checkered shirt, uh, also look pretty <laughs> decent on a mm. bike, you know. So I, I, I think when it comes to at least on the style side, right? At least to me, I think this bike is so versatile. Uh, you can be, you can really don't bother about dressing for it, lah. So I, I think it's uh, it's really iconic, lah. So I think if you are looking for something like that, this would be the kind of bike for you. Uh, oh. I think the the fastest speed is the the max. It's also less than a hundred. Yeah. Oh, about talking about kilometer per hour. Yeah. Talking about uh, speeds, right? Mm. Uh, does it vibrate a lot at the um, oh, highest wow, higher yeah. range of speed? Especially without the windshield, uh. mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So actually, it's a good workout, lah. You should be able to develop some <laughs> stomach muscles, <laughs> having to battle with the the wind. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, uh, 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 when you ride a Vespa, you are not really looking for speed. Mm-hmm. Uh, most probably, you are on the second or third lane, uh, so you are taking it easy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, occasionally you will get that wow, the rush of speed, especially when a big truck comes over. Mm-hmm. But not something that you will cause you to be like, oh my god, it's Unique. too much, lah. Yeah. 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 Given that the unique, the color is. Really do people actually look at it? No, so I don't really get much comments. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't. Uh, my, my neighbors will say, "Oh, you got a nice bike," but I think it's more like uh, they don't want me to make too much noise. There, <laughs> <laughs> I think they are trying to hint to me. <laughs> don't be too noisy, yeah. Uh. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, no, my Vespa, Vespa, no, no. Ah, uh, no noise. Uh, yeah, correct. So yeah, no, but I don't, I don't really get much uh, compliments. Uh, but generally, you get people looking at it. I've seen before some guys riding very big bikes, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, when they walk by the bike, they will like comment on it. Uh, so back to you, you mentioned before that you know if you have a stable of bikes right, mm-hmm. uh, if you have a versus I think would be one of your targets right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for your, for your, uh, yeah, really for <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think this is something you should consider. I know you are yeah, know. more into the classic ones but mm-hmm. you know I, I, I saw some videos of mm-hmm. uh, riders in America riding Harley Davidson's uh, sports bikes right mm-hmm. and a lot of them are starting to pick up a uh, Vespa right uh-huh. and they say wow it's such a joy to ride because you don't have to think about anything mm-hmm. and you just get on and it's it's fun nah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, poison him. poison him. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah XL forget it this is the one right? yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll stick to Gileras <laughs> yeah. I'll stick to Gileras oh my God. Gileras are sports scooters okay they are they are marketed as sports scooters mm. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, why to say yeah, they, they mm. look good also mm. Mm. Yeah. so so if, if, I mean in fact if if you ask me, do I like this bike? Mm. I mean, the brand itself, I like. Of course, everything that the Piaggio company makes are, are very good quality. And I have to attest that uh, to, to be producing a new range of scooters attests to their popularity. 
but for me I will stick I will still want to go back to my classic roots mm. you know <laughs> I the classical vespas mm. with the here hand and gear at <laughs> mm. clutch and the gear changing at the left hand <laughs> I guess mm. different riders got different perception. Mm. Uh. Yeah, and true. Yeah, for me, uh, I feel that the brand has a lot of history, mm. a very long history, mm. very iconic. And yeah, definitely it's nice like, to see a Vespa still on the road, the mm. company still surviving, still staying strong. Yes, mm. yeah. better at least a Vespa mm. is really a Vespa by heart. <laughs> Outside Vespa, inside also Vespa. <laughs> Made by Vespa. Mm. Unlike the other brand. <laughs> uh, Shen, thank you so much hey, for coming out. No to problem. Do this yeah, us. It's my honor. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's awesome my honor. Bike. Yeah. It's a nice, it's a nice bike. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I don't know if Zah wants it. <laughs> no, okay. I, I mean, if if somebody gives it to me, you know, uh, hey, I got extra Vespa. I'll take, I'll take. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. mind. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, my heart doesn't go for the automatic Vespa. Mm. If I want to go for the automatic scooter, I will go to the Gilera. Mm. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Our mission to convert him to right. Yeah. 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 Maybe a conversation to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, any riders want to review the bike? Ask to get in touch mm. us on our social media pages below. If you like and share. Uh, 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 Vespa riders out there, if you have mm. anything else to comment or any suggestion, uh, you put in in the comment section below. Like and share this video with your riding kakis, and don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to support us as well as our awesome sponsor, Liquid Moly. Uh, do check, click on the link below to check out the whole range of motorbike care products and use our promo code upon checking out. And that's it for the vlog. We mm. will see you in the next one. Awesome.